Ken, you're a physicist, you study consciousness, you come from a Japanese tradition, you appreciate Western struggles with uh, the nature of reality, or is there a God? When you step back and think about the meaning of reality and your place in it, what are the thought processes that you use? You know, from my youth, I always, you know, found myself fascinated by this concept of infinity. Yeah. And uh, I think finally, uh, all our endeavors are purposes and so on, meanings, and they have to do with infinity, I think. And, you know, nobody has really seen infinity in its face. You know, nobody knows what infinities are. But we do have this concept of potential infinity, so to speak, uh, when, you know, there's always a next thing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have next day, we have tomorrow, yeah. we have the next year. Right. As far as we have a series of next something, we are very close to infinity because that's how mathematicians treat infinity, actually, when they prove something. Yeah. They prove it for the case of n, and then <laughs> they say one. n plus one, and so on. Yeah. So we actually we like very much like to be closely linked to this infinity idea in when it manifests itself uh, in the next something. Yeah, so that, that's very interesting. So certainly when we deal with the universe, um, the question is whether our universe is infinite or finite is a question. But modern science, modern cosmology seems to indicate that even if our universe is finite, there are potentially other universes, yeah. an infinite number of universes in our Indeed, our universe may be infinite in, 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 in various ways. Uh, so infinity does encompass everything that we do. And so that's sort of a, a measuring stick or a prism that which you look through and you see reality is the concept of infinity. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, people sometimes talk about the end of science, but I don't think there's any the end. Because end of science meaning that yeah, uh, be, uh, that we've discovered all the really important like, principles and now now we're exactly. just now we're just uh, uh, doing you know measurements on the on the details yeah, like the you know that's the situation when people you know real, uh, thought that there will be nothing to re discover until they had these uh, two revolutions uh, theory of relativity and quantum mechanics all right, all right. so in, if you look at the history of science there were periods when they thought that there was nothing to discover. But then there will be surprises, breakthroughs, and there will be a whole new vista of things. I think, I suspect that is going to be our situation for many, many years to yeah, come. But that can't happen for uh, forever, I, I, I don't think. Can, do you think that can happen forever? You constantly, isn't there some fundamental level that you get down to and that's it? That's the rock bottom that you can't decompose whatever you have? I, I don't know. I have my doubts. Uh, you think what? it's possible that you, you can go on and on and on in an infinite series of explanations? For all practical purposes, I, uh, I think that's the case. I think that's a cop-out, uh, all practical <laughs> purposes. I want the reality. I'm not talking about for, for all practical purposes now, but that, that's a cheat. I'm saying for, forever, for, tr for a million years, for a billion years. Ultimately, you make the claim that there's a terminus of explanation in some sense, physical world or whatever, yeah. or it goes on forever. You can't, there's no other alternative. I really appreciate your philosophy there. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I suspect from time to time this theory of everything idea mm. might be a catch-22 situation. You know, the more you stick to this kind of uh, ultimate concept, yeah, yeah, yeah. the more, uh, the less free you become I, I, from my perspective. So, you know, it's very nice to think of um, ultimate truth, uh -huh. but uh, in order to get closer to truth, uh -huh. I think we need to take this practical approach that what counts is next something. Okay. That's my philosophy, probably. Okay, okay. Uh, that's good. And, yeah, and but, but I suspect that you actually have yeah. the same approach when it comes to your daily... Oh, for, sh for sure, and, yeah. and, and, and for all practical purposes, yeah. that's legitimate. But I want to get beyond all practical purposes. Well, the question is, if uh, 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 the question is, if there's anything beyond for all practical purposes. Yeah, that's right. That's and right. Th that and I have my doubts because in quantum mechanics, as you know, for all practical purposes is <laughs> probable, for probable what people. Yeah, for what people uh, is something that people have used to defend the Copenhagen interpretation. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. So 
quantum mechanics is good for all practical purposes. And, and, and that's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. And that's this has right. been a very strong a uh, position. Mm, mm. Many people try to uh, attack that, right. but without success. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I admire your courage uh, <laughs> in stating you want the ultimate truth, right. but this for all practical purposes stance is really hard to break, I think. Does consciousness play a role in, in your um, uh, search for meaning or the ultimate truth? Or is consciousness something that just is an accidental byproduct that came along and, and really has no great, it has great significance? It does, but no great, no, no great explanatory significance. It, it does. I mean, you know, if I worked on this principle for all practical purposes as a scientist, I would have chosen a different subject. You know, making, studying consciousness your day job is really hard. It's impossible. <laughs> you know, so I think anybody who is interested in consciousness actually have uh, made his or her decision, uh, consciously or unconsciously, that uh, no matter what practical fruit uh, that would bring, uh, he or she is going to pursue it anyway. So it, yes, consciousness is uh, very something very important in my life, and uh, it, it's likely that I won't be able to solve the mystery in my lifetime. But I'm going to do it anyway. So. Okay, look, I admire that greatly. And at a time in my life, I would I was almost doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I I live your life vicariously with you. So yeah, sure. with, with admiration and appreciation. Yeah, yeah. But but that actually is not my full question. It's, okay. it's half my question. Yeah. It, it's what motivates you. It's what yeah. gives you your meaning, and that's right. fine. But, but composers have the meaning to com write symphonies, and that's their great meaning, and that's wonderful. Mm. So conscious that to you. I'm, a I'm asking a bigger question. I'm asking the question is, when you see consciousness, does, is that a, 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 a fact, a, 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 a piece of data that you need to use to explain the reason for reality and the fundamental bedrock of reality. Because most scientists would say, no, it's an accidental product of evolution, and I don't need it to explain the, the ultimate reality, just like I don't need to explain uh, caterpillars. Uh, caterpillars came along, and consciousness came along. Uh, yes, I, I definitely regard consciousness as a necessary building block of the ultimate uh, picture of the universe. Uh, for example, Whitehead. Alfred Whitehead, a Cambridge mathematician, yeah. he stated that the redness of the sunset is as much a part of nature as an electron is. I strongly believe with him. Uh, consciousness is an integral part of nature, and without deciphering the mystery of consciousness, I don't think we have successfully arrived at a theory of everything. So, you know, when th physicists say theory of everything, what they mean usually is uh, unification of quantum mechanics with gravitation, but that's not sufficient from my point of view. You cannot have a theory of everything unless you understand consciousness. That's my own stance, and I'm going to stick to it.